to Inside Training Camp live here at the V-shaped table. We're in trips coverage now as we welcome Jeff Chidea into the mix. Good to be here. But we're going to start off with Mike Silver because Mike, we know we know you're tight with some folks up in Cleveland. And, and the question here is, we saw how disastrous it was. So the floor is quite low in Cleveland. But when you look at what they've done in comparison to the rest of the division, we're talking about their futures. Might their future be the brightest? In the division. Well, I'm going to try to say positive things about the Browns, keeping in mind that what we saw last year was an historic abomination in terms of just not having a chance to compete right. when they stepped out on the field. They gutted that place, and it was uh, not really fair to the coaches, including Hugh Jackson, but uh, they should be at least somewhat competitive or have a chance to compete in 2017. But meanwhile, you look at the Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger openly talking about retirement. Their window could be shrinking. Sure. Uh, the Ravens, I think, could be headed for some hard times, yep. potentially. Uh, they're getting old. And the Cincinnati Bengals had a nice run there where they kept making the playoffs and not being able to get over the hump. They've got a lot of talent in that building, but I worry about them, too. And so all of a sudden, Jeff, I look at the AFC North and I go, well, the Browns are at least ascending, albeit from the depths of, uh, you know, th the depths of whatever. <laughs> I'm glad you're qualifying but they that. Are, they yeah. are ascending technically, and the yeah. other three could be descending. Well, well, I think it may be a stretch to say they're ascending. And it was depressing just to watch that little highlight film of 90 seconds. But, look, nice offseason for them. I give them credit for that. They've made some good moves in the draft. They've, they've beefed up their offensive line and free agency. But until they get the quarterback situation figured out, Every other team you mentioned, they've got a quarterback. They've got a way to get into the future. And if, you, if the future's 10 years, okay, then maybe they can be that team. But I'm not going to sit here and say within the next two to three years, I'm going to be excited about what the Cleveland Browns have been doing. You, you talk about the quarterback. I mean, it's crazy to sound. They, they do trade for Brock Osweiler. I don't think any of us think he's their long-term answer. But what about Kaiser? I that, mean, that, that's my question. Is, is he going to be on the field in a couple years? Likely. But within those next couple of years, is he going to make the strides we've seen young quarterbacks make who've ended up make, being difference makers? I can't say that just yet. I, I'm not sold on that just yet. And, and so, again, I was all over them two years ago in the offseason, and I, I made a bunch of jokes about them, so I like what they've done. But on paper, that's not ascending. That's just – yeah, making well, plans. Well, they're ascending technically if you are the absolute worst I've ever seen <laughs> and now you have a chance <laughs> yeah, to stay yeah. in a game. You are technically ascending. Uh, listen, you and I talked off camera a little bit about the Jaguars, and I think that that's, Correct. A, that's a good analogy to me. They have taken lumps, taken lumps. We've thought, we've seen signs of them getting impact players like Jalen Ramsey that could help turn around a franchise, and on paper, they should ascend this year, but we wonder about the quarterback position uh, in, in terms of Blake Bortles. Well, the Jags should have been ascending for the past five years. They've been drafting in the top five every freaking year, so they've ascent, They've had talent. They've added free agents. But let's, let's just jump off that. Look at some other teams who have kind of been in the same lot as the Browns, the 49ers and the Rams as well. We, see, we saw them both make coaching changes and, and commit to leadership there. Have they at least established a foundation to build on? We know the Rams have Jared Goff going through a second year. The 49ers, they have Hoyer. They didn't really make a move for a quarterback. But are they putting pieces in place to at least turn a corner somewhat? Well, again, I, I think it's so early to tell. I mean, it's nice to have the hype that goes with young coaches and, and new GMs. And I like John Lynch. I like Les Snead. I think they're both really smart guys who have known a long time in this league. But it's still, until you see a roster, until you see players making a difference, it's hard to get excited about them. And the 49ers, to me, is more about just dysfunction. They shouldn't even be in this group if they had kept Jim Harbaugh four years ago. I think the Browns made some huge offseason acquisitions. Miles Garrett, obviously. Kevin Zeitler on the offensive line. But one I don't want to overlook is Greg Williams. Yes, sir. You're yes, going to see sir. an aggressive defense that, uh, you know, they're going to, if they go down, they're going to go down swinging on their terms.